I'm Nick, and every now and again, there'll be a motherboard that really piques my interest. You guys know, peeking and seeking and all that. This is the AU Star slash Bay collaboration board, the TA95X3D. This, my friends, is an MATX desktop motherboard with the top-end AMD mobile CPU, the Ryzen 9 9955HX 3D. That's right, a full 3D vCache CPU soldered to the board. But how does this compare to, let's say, a regular desktop system for the express purposes of... Well, gaming with the games that I play with. I'm depressed. A bit cheeky. I have trained for oh. this. Bing. No way. As a bit of a primer to all of this, my uh, games that I play, uh, maybe not the same games that you play, but it will give you a good understanding of what the performance looks like oh, wow. with something <laughs> like this. That'll do it. Wait in the game in the night, boys. Good and I've got to spoil this right from rip. This thing performs just as well, if not better, than my uh, gaming PC <laughs> with a laptop CPU. <laughs> this thing is insane. <laughs> it's way better than I thought it was going to be. All right, here it is, ladies and gents. The AU Star Sash TN Bay TA95HX 3D, an MATX motherboard with a 9950HX 3D on the motherboard. And by that, I mean it's soldered. I guess you knew that already because you're at this part of the video, but let's take a look at what comes with this board. There's not a lot here. First of all, we've got some documentation. I think you're going to need this. Well, maybe not if you're an experienced builder, but yeah, this will basically explain what everything is and where everything plugs in in Chinese, but you can get the information in English from their website. Just use the little QR code and you're good to go. There's also antennas for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E. This motherboard does not have Wi-Fi 7. There's a set of SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your three and a half inch hard drives. And finally, there's an IO shield, which you will need if you're building in a case. But for my testing, I use this on an open air test bench, so I didn't need this. Alrighty, here's the board itself. As I mentioned, it is in an MATX form factor and it is quite interesting. They've squeezed quite a lot onto this board. Speaking of, there's a front panel audio header, two USB 2.0 headers for liquid coolers and RGB controls and all that kind of stuff. There's a PWM fan header. There's a serial port header on the board as well as a smaller serial port header there's a TPM header if you wanted to use an external TPM module, which isn't required because the CPU does have that integrated. There's a three pin five volt addressable RGB header, a USB 3.2 type A header, as well as another three pin five volt addressable RGB header and the front panel header for all the lights and all the switches to turn on your system and to let you know that it's on. There's a 12 volt analog RGB header behind that, another PWM fan header, and then a five volt fan header behind that. There's four SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your three and a half inch spinning rust drives. There's a post beep speaker that'll let you know that everything's all good and up and running. There's a PWM fan header, another five volt fan header next to that. There's the 24 pin power connected to send juice to the board. There's a USB type C front panel header. I'm not sure of the speed of this header. There's three postcode debug LEDs on the surface of the board itself, which I didn't point out here. And there's a PWM fan header that's typically used for your CPU fan. There's another PWM fan header just above the top PCIe slot. And there's a single eight pin EPS power connected to send power to the CPU itself. There's two PCIe slots on this board. The top slot is a PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot, this is a full by 16 slot, and the slot towards the bottom is a PCIe Gen 4 by one slot. The top slot on the board is labeled, so it is PCIe Gen 5, and I have tested this, as you're about to find out a little bit later on in the video. The VRM layout on this board is a bit of an interesting one. This features an eight plus one plus one phase VRM setup. I'm not sure about the amperage for the power stages here, but you will notice that the whole IO cover is a heat sink for that VRM layout. This is pretty close to what we see with VRM layouts on mini ITX boards for AM5 CPUs. So uh, I'm guessing they're doing something quite similar here. The deal with the chipset is I'm not sure what the deal is with the chipset. So yeah. As for the CPU itself, as mentioned, this is an AMD Ryzen 9 9955HX3D. 
The cooler mounting for this is what you'd find typically for AM4 or AM5 motherboards. However, you will notice it does have a custom IHS or integrated heat spreader. This heat spreader appears to not just be a heat spreader, but some kind of heat pipe setup. To further investigate, I guess it's time to pull it off so we can see what's underneath to get a bit of a closer look at that IHS and the CPU itself. So removing it requires taking out four screws. You can see the pre-applied thermal paste here. It's uh, a perfectly adequate amount of thermal paste. Cleaning off the thermal paste doesn't really reveal anything else, but taking a closer look at what's under the heat spreader, you can see the CPU. So we've got the IO die, which is the big one at the top and the two CCDs underneath both being eight core CCDs, equaling a total of 16 cores and 32 threads. If you were to buy a laptop with this CPU in it, this is exactly how it would appear on the motherboard of the laptop if you were to remove whatever cooling solution was installed. To be honest, it's not that interesting to look at given that the heat spreader slash heat pipe setup has been made quite well. The board has two DDR5 DIMM slots supporting up to a total of 96 gigs of RAM at 6,000 mega transfers. I suspect that this would probably support up to 128 gigs to be honest with you, but I don't have a 128 gig kit because I'm not a millionaire. The board also features two M.2 slots for storage. There's pre-installed heat sinks for both of these slots here. They're very easy to remove. There's two screws per heat sink. You'll notice that there is labels on the board as well. I did check this. They're both PCIe Gen 5 by 4 M.2 slots. However, I don't have any available PCIe Gen 5 M.2 drives at the moment. So I've had to use a PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slot for all of the testing, but I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference for the testing that I was doing here for this video. For rear IO, there's a clear CMOS button. There's the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E, an HDMI 2.1 port, a display port. There's a single USB 3.2 5 gigabit port, a USB 2.0 port, two more USB 2.0 ports, the five gigabit ethernet adapter port. There's two more USB 3.25 gigabit ports and there's all of the audio jacks for the built-in audio interface with optical slash SPDIF output as well. However, if you do look closely, there is no USB-C port for the rear IO, which I think is a little bit strange given right now it's 2026. Right off rip, let's take a look at the BIOS. You can see here the manufacturer name Tianbei, the TA95X3D, and the CPU, the 9955HX3D, it's a 16 core, 32 thread processor with a base clock of 2.5 gigahertz. I've also got 32 gigs of DDR5 memory here. Yeah, we all know what's going on with memory. I don't want to talk about that right now. The kit that I'm using is an 8,000 mega transfer kit. I've got this set to 6,000 for stability purposes. And because that's kind of the sweet spot for a chip like this, taking a look at Probably the uh, most interesting thing is the fact that this has uh, RGB control in the BIOS. Well, that's not really that interesting, but I, I think it's worth mentioning because you can set RGB in the BIOS for some reason. I have more thoughts on this later concerning uh, why the BIOS looks like this. Anyway, the most important thing is actually the overclocking settings here or just basic things you want to do. So first of all, you've got manual CPU overclocking, but it's really not as in-depth as you think it would be, mainly because this is a mobile chip after all. You really have to remember that. However, memory timing, they've kind of hidden away in this menu. Yeah, I know that in regular BIOSes, in the AMD overclocking section, it's typically here, but if you kind of just want an easy way to get to this, uh, there is no easy way other than doing it this way. So as you can see here, I enabled the Expo profile here at 8,000 mega transfers, and then I set it to 6,000 just for stability purposes. And I found that to be the sweet spot for systems like this. Other than that, the BIOS is pretty standard here. There's nothing really else that you need to do here. Uh, one thing that I think is strangely removed is eco mode. Uh, 
I, I may speak to Astar about this, maybe getting an updated BIOS for this, but the fact that Eco Mode is not there is a red flag for home labbers out there who want all of the cores and all of the threads, but don't want all of the power consumption. I hope that makes sense to you guys. And that's really it. There's nothing else to report here. Everything here is pretty basic. And there are things that you can see in here that they use. You can kind of tell that they just bang this BIOS file out. The BIOS version is 0.01. I'll be honest with you guys. We'll probably never see another BIOS version for this board because why, why would you need one? And yeah, I, I think the main thing is I would love to see them adding eco mode support for this. But yeah, you know, it is what it is. As mentioned, the AMD Ryzen 9 9955HX3D is a 16 core CPU. You can see here in Task Manager all of the cores and all of the threads and everything you need to know about the CPU. The networking interface, which I didn't show here, is a 5 gigabit interface. And I did test it and it works as intended. Interestingly, the memory does in fact run at 6,000 mega transfers with zero stability issues. And I got a bit level with you guys here. I have used this system quite a lot with this motherboard and this configuration. And it has been absolutely rock solid, especially for gaming. If you're curious about using a full fat graphics card in this, I did use an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090. I used the MSI Supreme SoC version of the card. And you can see here, the top PCIe slot does in fact run at PCIe by 16 Gen 5 with no issues whatsoever. And as you're about to find out, the performance is basically in line with my 7800X3D gaming PC, which is also featuring an RTX 5090. Well, first of all, I wanted to see what the deal was with the integrated GPU. It's an AMD Radeon 610 mobile GPU. And the performance that you're seeing here is very underwhelming. Now, if you're looking at using this purely with the integrated graphics, I would say almost don't bother doing that because that's not really what this board is designed to do. This is designed, my friends, to be a uh, all-in-one motherboard where you don't have to install the CPU yourself. And yeah, let's take a look at what it looks like with an RTX 5090. I mean, that's a comparison for me because I game with a 5090. I know I only tested one game in this video because the, this is the game that I mainly play, Call of Duty Black Ops 7, not everyone's favorite game, but I really enjoy playing Warzone with my friends and the built-in benchmark gives you a good indication of how the game is gonna perform on any system. So first of all, on the left-hand side, you've got the TA95X3D system, and I've kind of split the video so you can get a bit of an idea with the telemetry in each corner for the system. So on the right hand side is my MSI MEG X870E Godlike base system with the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. This is the gaming system that I typically use, but for the last little while I've been using the TA95X3D just to see if it's something that I would think would be worth switching to. As you can see right from the jump, the performance with the TA95X3D is a little bit better than my 7800X3D gaming PC. This overall was a bit of a surprise to me because I wasn't expecting this mobile CPU to be as good as it is. The settings that I used are the settings that I use to game with as well. I play at 4K Extreme with everything turned up, no ray tracing turned on. I also do play with DLSS in performance mode just to bump the FPS up a little bit. I don't use frame generation or anything like that. I keep it pretty simple with my settings. I don't like to play with like the lowest quality settings just to boost up the FPS anymore. I know sweaty gamers do that, but that's not my cup of tea. I still want it to look good while I get high FPS. Taking a look at the final results from this built-in benchmark in Black Ops 7, you can see that the TA95 X3D system overall is faster. However, it does lose out in a couple places. Like if you look at the FPS that's calculated for the CPU alone, the 7800X3D is slightly faster. But if you look at the lowest fifths and the lowest first percentage, you can see that the 9955HX3D is faster overall. And this doesn't just translate to a benchmark, this translates to real gameplay as well. 
This is capture from the game running through my capture card so you can get a bit of an idea. This thing is buttery smooth. You can see that it's sitting at, at around about 175 FPS on Nuketown with a lot of stuff going on. The truth is we have seen boards like this in the past, more specifically with Intel CPUs in the MATX form factor. It's really cool to see that we've got the top end AMD mobile processor also being the X3D variant, which is completely insane. But there are a couple little things that I think may turn some people off. First of all, the board itself is really good. It's really user-friendly to build with. The main issue I see is in the BIOS. When you dig through the BIOS, everything's there, but it is a little bit tricky to find. However, if you're an enthusiast, this is not gonna be much of a big deal for you. You'll be able to find where everything is. For me in particular, I found everything after digging a little while, but it would have been nice to have let's say a more, I hate saying this, but it, like a gamery kind of skin in the BIOS because I know they can do it. I have seen other integrated boards that make it more visually appealing for getting to different settings in the BIOS. But yeah, this just feels like they whacked it in and that was the end of it. Another thing regarding the BIOS is this board will allow you to have full RGB lighting control in the BIOS. But like I said, if they put a nice skin on the BIOS, it would have been really easy to do that as well. But yeah, it's, it's kind of all over the place. I mean, that's if you care about RGB. I don't, but there are people out there who do care about it. And finally, the strangest thing is, I know what chipset this runs, but I don't think it's right. It says that this board runs the Bixby chipset, which is codenamed for X570. And given the feature set of this board itself, I don't think that's right. So we'll, 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 uh, we'll just say that I think, if I'm being honest, it's either a B650 chipset or a B850 chipset. But there's no way of really telling what it is unless I can, oh, maybe... Oh, the as media chip is on there. I could probably find that out. Nope. If we do the maths here for a, let's call it a desktop equivalent, because we know that's not really true because this is a mobile chip, but let's say a 9950X3D here in Australia at the moment is around about 1,050 Aussie dollars. And this board is about 1,100 Aussie dollars. So you're paying 50 bucks for a motherboard. But that's not really how it works because there are a couple limitations with the 9955HX3D, and that is the power draw. This chip will do around about 75 watts of power draw at full tilt, which is a good thing. And for the performance to be what it is, is kind of absurd, to be honest. The fact that you can go out and buy this on an MATX motherboard with a laptop processor and still not really lose out on much performance if you're going to be gaming, I think that this is kind of a win and I do not hate the idea of this board. In fact, I'm toying with the idea of building my new gaming PC with this board because it does everything I needed to do and really nothing that I don't need it to do. And it does it really well while keeping the thermals down. Yeah. It's overall not terrible. I, I really like stuff like this. I like that when people are given the opportunity to do something ridiculous that nine times out of 10, especially in tech, they'll just do it. And most of the time it turns out quirky or really cool. And I think this one falls into the really cool category. So yeah, good work, uh, TM Bay and Star, because the TA95X3D is a banger. I love it. I love this thing. It's so freaking cool. Now, to answer the question for all the home lab users out there, yeah, sure, you could use this if you're like building a server, but the major drawback is something that I don't think I talked about. And that is something that is usually really important to me. Eco mode is unavailable huh? in the BIOS. So there is that.